Here he is, the man in red, St. Nick, Chris Kringle, the king of the North Pole, Santa Claus! Ho, ho, ho. Well, hello there, boys and girls. Hi, Miss Booksy. Miss Booksy, you're always on the nice list. Really? Well, I try really hard, so I'm glad it's working. Oh, who's there? It sounds like a, a man. <gasps> a nutcracker, actually. Hi, kids. Welcome to Storytime at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. Today, we're reading The Nutcracker. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. It was Christmas Eve and the Stahlbaum family was getting prepared for a holiday party. And by prepared, I mean they were giggling, wiggling, and singing. Fa la 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 la. <laughs> Deck the halls is right. This place is looking so festive and fancy. Oh, and that's Clara Marie Stahlbaum. One thing you should know about Clara, she loves, loves, loves Christmas. Oh, Mom, I'm just so excited. I can't wait for hot cocoa and singing Christmas carols and decorating cookies and building a snowman and presents and candy canes and did I mention presents? Ooh, this is so exciting. Yes, Clara, take a deep breath. You'll want to save some energy for tomorrow cause it's... Christmas Day, woohoo! You can each choose one present from your stocking to open. Yay! Oh my gosh. Ooh, slime. I love it. A new set of markers. Ugh, lame. Smile for the family pick. Say stocking stuffer. Stocking, stocking stuffer. That was so funny. And at once, the house was filled with party guests, friends, and family. Everyone was in good spirits and filled with cheer. And of course, they put out Christmas cookies for Santa. One for Santa, one for me. One for Rudolph, one for me. Mr. D is here. Whoa, guys, Mr. D, that's what we all call him, is the town magician and toy maker, which means I know he brought gifts for everyone. Hey, Mr. D, anything in there for someone named Clara? Hmm, not sure. Come on, man. Just kidding. Of course I have a special gift for you. His name is Prince Oliver. Oh, it's so beautiful. I love it. Wow, that is so cool. You must be very careful with this nutcracker. It's fragile. You bet. So Clara showed her new toy all the cool things about Christmas parties. Even though Clara was being very careful, her not so careful brother Fritz was roughhousing by all the new toys. Get over here, throw! in the way of my sick moves. <laughs> that is so sad. Oh, Fritz, go to your room. Fine. I'm sorry, Clara. Let's put your nutcracker over here for tonight. Dad and I will try to fix it in the morning. Okay. Be brave, Clara. Come on, be brave. <clears throat> I, uh, I'm uh, totally fine. Not sad at all. I just need to excuse myself to my room. Maybe forever. Okay, bye. <laughs> that night, long after everyone had drifted off into a Christmas Eve slumber, Clara wanted to check on her beloved Nutcracker. But she was not prepared for what was going to come next. It's so dark. Let me just flip this switch right here. Wow, so pretty. Hmm, it's midnight. Hmm? What, what was that? Hi, over here! Ah, talking mice? Well, that was weird. OMG, what's happening in here? 
Suddenly, Clara heard a voice from inside the cupboard. Hello? Hello? What? Wait, did you guys hear that? Where's that coming from? I'm in here. Let me out. It, it, it sounds like a, a man. <gasps> what do you think is going to happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hello? Who's there? It sounds like a, a man. <gasps> A nutcracker, actually. Woo, it was tight in there. What? No, that can't be. You're... I am stiff. My legs need a good stretch. You're... I'm hungry. I hate to be a bother. Do you have any snacks, Clara? My nutcracker is like, yay high, and does not talk. Um, last time I checked, I talk. I talk a lot. In fact, I once won a contest in my kingdom for most number of words ever said in a row without taking a breath. Yo, Nutcracker Man, are you ready to battle? Oh no, the mice again! I'm so confused. You better be careful and take shield, my princess. Um, princess? I'm just a kid. Shh, they'll hear us. Who? Us! Well... Watch out! Whoa. Oh my! Urgh, these mice! Double owl! Hold on, I gotta call my guys. Hey dudes, what's up? Yeah, I think I got a problem here. I'm gonna need you to come bail me out. Who was that? Just a bunch of world-class tin soldiers. No big deal. Did somebody say tin soldiers? Whoa, that was quick. Meanwhile, the Mouse King was preparing his mice for battle. All right, men! Um, hello? I mean, people, mice, you know what I'm saying. He'll never learn. Now is the moment. We're going to charge the tin soldiers and the gingerbread men and take this place back. Oh, no. And on the other side of the room, the Nutcracker appeared to be the leader of the tin soldiers and the gingerbread men. I mean, you guys, they are just mice. We can totally take them. Um, uh, boss? Oop. Don't worry, guys. We got this. I'll show you how it's done. Ooh, <laughs> yummy. No, 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 no. Gotta hit him with the element of surprise. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Come on, there's plenty of cheese to go around. <laughs> Wait a minute! I almost forgot my secret weapon! Icing! You wouldn't dare! I would dare! Ah! The icing is making my joints stick! Ah! The icing's making me... fancy! Ooh, look at me! I feel like a new cookie! Whoa, this place is crazy. As the gingerbread men were admiring their new looks, they didn't notice the mice gaining on them. But Clara got an idea. Hey, Mouse King. Huh? Look, a big piece of smoked Gouda. <sighs> smoked Gouda, my favorite. <laughs> Come on, quick. I know somewhere we can go. Tara led the Nutcracker to her backyard, but things were a little different. This is really weird. My swing set used to be right there. <gasps> wow. How beautiful. Um, Prince Oliver? Clara? Whoa, my arm is healed. I'm all better. That's not all that looks better. You're a real prince. Can I interest you in a dance? Who, me? I don't really dance. But, 
Okay, just this once. Milady. Wow, I thought you said you don't dance. You're so graceful. Who, me? <laughs> oh, that's, um... Yeah? I just can't seem to find the words for it. <laughs> that was hilarious. But then suddenly, all the magical snowflakes seem to be beckoning Clara and Prince Oliver in a different direction. I have a familiar feeling. I think I know where they want us to go. Really? Yes, that way! To be continued. Let's keep reading. Chapter 3, here we go! Wiggle, snap, story time! I think they want us to go that way. They're so beautiful. Do you know them? Do I know them? I mean, do I know them? Do I know them? Yeah. No, I've never seen them before in my life. Um, okay. Well, that was weird. Anyway, follow me, Clara. Oh, look at that. Two turtle doves. How sweet. <laughs> Prince Oliver, look at that pond. Seven swans are swimming. <laughs> and over there, in that nest, three French hens. <laughs> what even makes them French? Do they like croissants, brioche, bouf bourguignon? Hmm. While they were discussing this cultural puzzle, Prince Oliver and Clara were startled by 12 drummers drumming. I don't know, but I've been told Prince Oliver's arm is as good as gold. It is. My arm is as good as gold, all fixed. Sound off, one, two, sound off, three, four. I know these people, they're from my kingdom. Hello, your highness, it's been a long time. The magical snowflakes told us where to find you and to bring you home. You can take us there? Yeah, of course. Yay, Clara, I can't wait to show you everything. You're gonna love it. Ooh, this is so exciting. Oh, uh, I just need a little break. Oh, one thing I didn't tell you. I'm from a place called the Land of Sweets. Break over. Let's go. When Prince Oliver and Clara arrived at the Land of Sweets, they were greeted with the sound of trumpets. Wow, I feel so royal. Come on, I have to show you my throne. You have a throne? <laughs> yeah, of course. Where did you think I'd do all my princely things? This place is amazing. <laughs> it is, and my throne is right over here. Oh, hello. What's going on here? Who are you? I'm the Sugar Plum Fairy, and I came to the Land of Sweets to help your kingdom and to keep your seat warm while you were away. Aw, that is so nice. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm back now, so... Oh, right! D don't uh, mind me. Uh, oh. uh, oof. Yeah, this feels right. Well, now that I have your attention, I have to tell you the most magical story. The prince told the kingdom all about how there was an epic battle with the mice, and how cheese and icing were being thrown around, and how Clara basically saved his life by distracting the Mouse King long enough for them to escape. So, she's pretty much my hero. Yay! Clara! 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 Aw, you guys. <laughs> You know, we usually celebrate this kind of thing with a dance. Who, me? I don't usually dance. Here we go again. <laughs> that was hilarious. But okay. While everyone was dancing, Prince Oliver and the Sugar Plum Fairy looked like they were having a secret meeting. I really think we should have a big celebration in honor of your friend Clara. I like the way you think. A celebration of sweets. From around the world. Sweet! May we present gelato from Italy, mango sticky rice from Thailand, baklava from Greece, churros from Mexico, pavlova from Germany, chocolate from Belgium. 
And now, a woodwind performance from Danish dancers. <laughs> So, what do you think, Clara? I think this whole place is delicious and so festive. Have I told you Christmas is my favorite? Whoa! 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 What were you about to say? Uh-huh. I, I don't. Oof, that's gotta hurt. Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> wow, this really is some party, but I think I may be approaching a stomach ache here. Too many sweets. Can I interest you in a chocolate lava mousse cake? Mm -hmm. No, thank you. <gasps> Aw, you know what that means. Sugar Plum Fairy, don't hold out on us. Oh, uh, I really shouldn't. Oh, yes, you should. Clara, she is the most beautiful ballerina in all the land. And that sound means it's time for the dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. Oh, all right. Special. You should think about going on Broadway. I'll bet you... I didn't even know we had a doorbell here. <gasps> oh no, this doesn't look good. Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Ah, who's at the door? It looks like... The Mouse King. No! Quick. Everybody, run! Hey, I'm just here to see you. Who, me? Yeah, you. Couldn't be. Then who? Ah, uh, stop it. You're trying to trick me with these riddles. Guards! Run, guards! Touche! Quick, look over there! Hmm, that sounds suspicious. Get him! Come on, Mouse King. What do you have to say for yourself now? I, I... Yeah? I just wanted the Nutcracker's help with this. What am I gonna do with all these pistachios? <sighs> so you're telling me after all this and all that before, it was all because you needed help from the Nutcracker to crack some nuts? Um, yeah, basically. Why didn't you just say so? Oh, come on, man. You know having an epic battle is way more fun. Yeah, I guess it is. But should we call it a truce? Sure. But, uh... I believe I can help with that. Uh, okay. Okay, well, I think it's time for the last waltz of the night. But this time, Clara, we want to get you involved. Who? Me? Well, I don't. Say it, sister. We all know you dance. Well, but now we want you to look the part. <gasps> wow, this is beautiful. <laughs> that looks so beautiful. Hit it, DJ. Wow, you sure do a lot of dancing in this kingdom. My kind of place. I told you you'd love it here. It's about time for me to make my final adieu. Thank you so much for holding down the fort for me while I was gone. Anytime, Prince Oliver. May all your dreams come true. I have a magical feeling they will. Nice ride. I'm off. On to my next adventure! Merry Christmas! <laughs> well, I guess I should get going too. Aw, I was hoping you'd stay. You mean I could stay? And have all the treats that I want and get to hang out with the prince? Sure. 
Clara, Clara. Clara, Clara. Hmm? Hey, Prince Oliver? <laughs> Who? What? No, that can't be it. Um, where, am I still in the land of sweets? Well, it looks like a land of sweets downstairs. Christmas breakfast is ready, complete with chocolate chip pancakes and fruit parfaits. <gasps> I'm up. Clara went downstairs and Christmas morning was in full effect. Good morning, Clara. Here, open your gift. Wow, a unicorn doll. I love it, thanks. Who wants hot cocoa? A treat before breakfast? Yes, please. Oh, it's so early. I wonder who that is. Merry Christmas! Good morning. A package from Miss Clara Marie Stahlbaum? That's me. Thank you. No problem, princess. Hmm, you look so familiar. Yeah, I get that a lot. I just have one of those faces. Wait, I want to get you something. Here you go. Oh, I usually don't make a habit of eating my friends. What? It's just a cookie. <laughs> That's what you think. Oh, now I get it. Um, okay. Well, enjoy your gift. Thanks, you too. I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, I just love unexpected gifts. Oh, my nutcracker, <laughs> he's just like new. His broken arm is fixed? But who fixed it? The note says, Christmas is fun and so are you. I fixed your special gift with some glue. But who is it from? Ah, you're welcome. Well, it's a Christmas miracle. Yes, indeed. This really is my favorite day of the year. <laughs> Aw, happy ending. What a great story. Today, we are jumping right into winter. I know, it's not winter yet, but we're excited. Almost. In our minds, it's already snowing. Yeah. This could be like an ornament, Absolutely. or like a little, a little night light. Real quick. Snow yes. glitter inside, so that when we're looking from the outside, it looks like a snowball. This is so pretty, Crafty Carol. Yay. Blue paint pen here. All right, so I cut out a little nose. Yeah, it's gonna take a little minute to dry. Oh, oh these I look love so these. good. They're so, oh my gosh, I'm totally gonna hang mine in my window. Is that a tiny tear? Looks like Ebenezer Scrooge might have a heart after all. Are you crying? No, I think it's raining. No, it isn't. Let's go! One more stop. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is story time. Today we're reading a Christmas carol. Wiggle, snap, story time. Bah humbug. Ebenezer Scrooge owned a factory that made toys, which should be awesome, right? Who doesn't love toys? But it wasn't awesome at all because Mr. Scrooge was very mean to his workers. He made them work too much and paid them too little. He wouldn't even let them take any toys home to their children. Not even this kind of broken one. My son Tim would love to have a toy of his own. No way. I'll sell it for parts. Get back to work, Cratchit. The workers didn't even get to take off on their birthdays. <laughs> Keep working. That's so not cool. The only holiday they got was Christmas Day. And that's where our story begins, kids. The day before Christmas, Ebenezer was at home alone, counting his money. Three million and one, three million and two, million. What? We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Now where was I? Three million and three, three million and four. Hello, we're collecting money for a Christmas dinner for the poor. Tell them to eat their lunch more slowly and make it last. Three million and four. Three million and... This time, it was Ebenezer Scrooge's nephew, Fred. Fred invited him to a family party, but Scrooge said he couldn't go. 
Sorry, Fred. I don't like people. And besides, I won't be finished counting my money by then. Okay. Well, Merry Christmas. Bye, humbug! I wish everyone would just leave me alone! Wow, that is so mean. Later that night, Scrooge was fast asleep. Suddenly, there was a knock on his door. If you're here to tell me Merry Christmas, I'm gonna call the police! Oh, a ghost! Boo! Oh, sorry, that's my ghosthood. I made it myself. I mean, hello, Mr. Scrooge. I'm the ghost of Christmas past. Now let's take a walk. No thanks! Ugh. Well, it wasn't very nice. Uh, I mean, uh, sure, whatever you say, ghost. The ghost of Christmas past and Scrooge traveled back in time. They were inside a house and saw a happy little kid. Who's that brat? And why does he look so happy? He doesn't even have any toys. That's you. You were happy then. This was your favorite time of year. I think you especially loved singing carols. Don't you remember? Nope. Well, do you remember this? <coughs> Scruffles! Oh, that's my dog Scruffles. Oh, he was my best friend. I got him for Christmas that year, even though my parents were allergic. <laughs> Me and all Scruffs used to do everything together. Aw, that's so sweet. Okay, I get it. I'm supposed to learn a lesson, right? Well, it ain't gonna work. A humbug! Oh, you're not done yet. And poof, the ghost disappeared and Scrooge was back at home. He started to go to bed when there was another knock on his door. Ah, sheesh, who are you supposed to be? Oh. Hello, Mr. Scrooge. I'm the ghost of Christmas present. Presents? You got presents for me? Great, what is it? No, no, I mean present as in now. Not the past, not the future, the present. Well, why didn't you just say that? The ghost of Christmas now took Scrooge to a very small house. It belonged to his assistant, Bob Cratchit. It looked like Christmas day, but there was very little food on the table and no presents under their little tree. Yet, everyone looked happy. Tiny Tim hugged his dad and said, It's okay we don't have any presents this year, Papa. I'm just glad we get to spend the whole day with you. Wait, let's zoom in on that. Is that a tiny tear? Looks like Ebenezer Scrooge might have a heart after all. OMG, I love it. Are you crying? No, I think it's raining. No, it isn't. Whatever, let's go. One more stop. This time, the ghost of Christmas now took Scrooge to his nephew Fred's house. The whole Scrooge family was there. Fred clinked his fork on a glass and made a toast. Mmm, toast with jelly. Maybe a little butter. That's how I like my toast, you know. No, not a piece of bread toast. This kind of toast. To family, the most important thing in the world. To, to family. family. If only Uncle Ebenezer were here, I wish he knew how much we love and miss him. What? Love me? Seriously? For real? Hey, I'm right here, guys. You know they can't hear you, right? Oh, uh, I, I, I'm sure they're just joking, anyway. Okay, that's it for the present. Goodbye. And suddenly, Scrooge was back at home. But before he could climb back into bed, there was, you guessed it, another knock on the door. Sup, so, I'm the ghost of Christmas future. Hop into my time machine. That looks like a regular horse and buggy. These horses are really fast. Hold on. They hopped onto the horse and buggy, and the ghost of Christmas future took Scrooge forward 20 years. Wow, this is so fun. Scrooge saw a very old man who was all alone and awfully miserable. Who's that? That's you. Me? Why do I look so sad? Oh, am I not still rich? You're lonely. You finally got your wish that everyone would just leave you alone. What's that I'm saying? Shh, listen. It was Christmas morning and Ebenezer Scrooge knew what he had to do. He jumped out of bed and filled his pockets with money. He ran to his toy factory and filled a giant sack with toys. Then he walked through the town, giving money and toys to everyone he saw. Aw, that is so nice. 
Scrooge stopped at Bob Cratchit's house. Merry Christmas, Bob. I, I have your holiday bonus and gifts for all your children. This puppy right here is for Tim. Wow, I don't believe it. Thank you, Mr. Scrooge. I named him Scruffles Jr., but you can name him whatever you like. No, Scruffles is perfect. This is the best Christmas ever. Ebenezer Scrooge thought so too, but he still had one more stop. He went to Fred's house and joined the family party. <laughs> they sang carols, ate cookies, and Ebenezer even gave a special toast. To family. To, to family. family. Mr. Scrooge had learned a very important lesson. And from that day on, he tried his best to be generous and kind. He even stopped saying bah humbug. Bah ha ha ha, Merry Christmas. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. I heard something coming from outside. Take a look. Look over there. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. Whoa, I always knew reindeer existed. I just knew it. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading The Night Before Christmas. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi guys, my name is Holly, and I'm gonna tell you about the most epic thing that ever happened to my family, ever. It was this one time I actually met him. You know, the guy in red, Saint Nick, Kris Kringle, you probably know him best as Santa Claus. <laughs> so get this, twas the night before Christmas when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. I mean, we were stirring, cause we couldn't wait for Christmas morning. Aw, that's so sweet. This is my kid brother, Gabriel. His favorite day of the year is Christmas, so you can imagine how excited he was. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The kids made a lot of preparations for Christmas Eve and for the arrival of Santa. They hung their stockings, they baked cookies, and made a plate for Santa. Don't forget a carrot for Rudolph. They tidied their rooms, they brushed their teeth, they wrapped presents, and finally they said goodnight to their parents. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And mama in her handkerchief and I in my cap had just settled in for a long winter's nap. Everyone was sleeping peacefully and anticipating the best morning ever when out on the lawn there arose such a clatter. I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window, I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. Ooh, this is so exciting. Whoa, what happened? It's freezing. I heard something coming from outside. Take a look. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. Gabe, look over there. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. Whoa, I always knew reindeer existed. I just knew it. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick. I can't believe this is actually happening. Santa Claus is coming to our house. No one at school is going to believe me when I tell them. Look, look at the reindeer. They're so, so magical. The reindeer and sleigh got closer and closer to the kid's house. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Ho, ho, ho! Now Dasher and Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder, on Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all! Ho, ho, ho! Wow, this is so fun! As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop the coursers they flew, with a sleigh full of toys and Saint Nicholas too. He's here, you guys, he's really here. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. The reindeer must be so tired from going to so many kids' houses tonight. Yeah, I hope they like the carrots we left them. Maybe they will want some hot chocolate? Maybe. Let's go downstairs. I think I hear a rustling in the chimney. 
As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So Gabe and Holly were waiting by the chimney as good old St. Nick barreled down towards them. I see his boots. I see his bag full of gifts. And like that, Santa popped down the chimney and the kids got to see him in real life. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. I can't believe it. It's actually really, really him. Look, a bundle of toys he had flung on his back and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. He was even more magical looking than they imagined. His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses. His nose, like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. Do you think he has the art supplies I wanted in there? I really hope he has the science kit I asked for. <laughs> Wow, that is so cool. While the kids wondered about their gifts, Santa took a look around with a smile. Look, Gabe, I think he likes the note that you left him. He's laughing. <laughs> he had a broad face and a round little belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. Yeah, it was Def the reindeer joke that did it. I mean, come on, a reindeer walks into an ice cream bar? Yeah, yeah, Gabe, we all know that joke. You've told it like a hundred times. Meanwhile, Santa was making his way around the room, smiling at family pictures, filling stockings, and warming himself by the fire. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf. And I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. Hey Santa, welcome to our house. We hope you're having a magical night. Whoa, he sees us. I hope we aren't in trouble. But a wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. Shh. He's unloading the presents. He spoke not a word, but went straight to work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk. And after Santa was done with all the presents, things got a little silly. He took off his boots and sat by the fire to rest. We didn't want him to miss out on our awesome Christmas cookies, so... OMG, I love it. Here you go, sir, or er, um, Santa, um, St. Nick. Hello there, kids. Why, thank you so much. I made the green Christmas tree ones. They're lemon flavored. Mmm, these are delicious. The best cookies I've had tonight. Although I was in Italy and had some of the most delicious biscotti. Oh, 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 that was a Christmas treat. Whoa, that is so cool. And then in Holland, I had these scrumptious cookies called speculoos. I wish we could go on a Christmas cookie world tour. Sounds like a sweet dream. <laughs> oh, do you want to play a game with us? It's our Christmas Eve tradition to play pin the tail on the reindeer. Well, it's not a real reindeer, just a paper one. They decorated a gingerbread house. They wrapped gifts for their presents. They drank hot cocoa. They played dreidel. They listened to Santa tell stories from the North Pole. Yay, I'm so happy. Finally, the kids started to feel really tired. It was the middle of the night after all. Ho, 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 well, this was so much fun, kids. But I should get going. I have so many houses to visit before morning. Yeah, we should get to bed. Thank you so much, Santa. See you same time, same place next year. Sure, just keep yourself on the nice list and not that naughty one. Ho, 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 ho. Then you'll see me again next year. Say hi to Mrs. Claus for us. Will do. And laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney, he rose. Come on, let's go look out the window. Hi, Rudolph. He sprang to his sleigh to his team gave a whistle and away they all flew like a down of a thistle. See you next year, Santa. Then I won't even bother my sister. I'll be well behaved, I promise. Me too. <laughs> I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight. Happy, Happy Christmas, Christmas to all and to all, all a good, good night. night. What a great story. Thanks for coming to story time. See you next time, bye. No, you like the beach and the sun and hanging out with me. Don't you remember? 
I'm very happy here. See, he's the Snow Prince. And you can be the Snow Princess if you like. No way! Then you can be my prisoner. Hey! Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is story time. Today we're reading The Snow Queen. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi, I'm Gerda. I grew up in a place called Florida. You know, where everything is always happy and fun and super sunny. <laughs> Siggy! Sorry, Gerd. Wally overshot that one. Oops, can't control these things sometimes. Well, that's all right, guys. Who am I to get in the way of some fun in the sun, eh? <laughs> Just don't forget some sunscreen. As you can tell, I had a lot of friends, but no one made me happier than my most special friend of all. <sighs> Kay. <laughs> We did everything together, like fly kites, and build sandcastles, and make flowers. A rose for you, my lady. And go on awesome vacations to Kay's grandma in Alaska. Alaska, here we come! <laughs> hey Kay, what do Alaskans order at a restaurant? Um, I don't know. Ice burgers? <laughs> Get it, ice burger. <laughs> that was so funny. Burr. Sure is cold out here. Good thing I packed my winter coat. What? It's not real. So anyway, Kay and I had a really fun trip in Alaska, but I was ready to go back home to sunshine and happiness. <laughs> That's when things got really, really not happy. There we were, sitting with the snowmen and eating ice cream when suddenly... Ah! Snow bees! Oh, the meanest bees ever! Well, maybe we can give them just a little. Sharing is caring, eh? Oh, okay, but no more than one lick each. Ow, ow, eat. that hurts, ow. Stop, stop, me no snow bees. Oh, stop right there. Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. But it was too late. The snow bees had already stung Kay like a hundred times. Not to mention finish all his ice cream will not let some snow bees ruin our vacation. Right, Kay? Right? Hmm. Huh. Mm, okay, I guess I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> that's, a, that's a funny joke, Kay. <laughs> no, but seriously. I've had enough of your happiness, okay? Leave me alone. But I, I, I don't understand. I thought we were BFFs forever. You gave me a rose. I hate roses. Okay. You're probably just in pain from all those snow bee stings. Not to worry, I know just the trick. <gasps> Nothing like a good reindeer sled ride to get you out of the blues. No, I hate reindeer. I hate sleds. I hate everything. Okay, I get it. It was my fault you got stung, but we were besties. <laughs> Guess I better get going. Sunshine State, here I come. I totally thought Kay would come after me, but he didn't. I was so angry at Alaska, I vowed never to come back again. Oh no, I hope she's okay. They're back. Wahoo, did you get me that snow globe I asked for? Uh-oh, how was I gonna tell them what happened? Uh, hi guys, so funny story, Kay's actually not here. I thought you went with Kay to his grandma. I mean, if you wanted some time away from us, you could have just said so. What happened was we were eating ice cream next to a snowman when a bunch of super mean snow bees totally attacked us and stung Kay like a zillion times. And he got really mad at me for letting him get stung. So he ordered me to leave him alone in Alaska. I can't believe I totally ruined everything. That boy is always happy and kind. Not to mention, he's got stars in his eyes whenever he sees you. Are you sure that was what happened? Yes, I'm sure, except... Except what? Except those snow bees sure look strange. They were all blue and icy and mean. Maybe they transferred their meanness, so that's what made Kay not so happy. Oh my, poor Kay. I'll get to the bottom of this if it's the last thing I do. Yeah, yeah, I know I said I'd never go back, but this was for Kay. Hit it, back to Alaska. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. I was determined to find Kay and bring back his happiness. 
We got this, guys. Uh, just a little further. There! Hold up! That's where we had our ice cream. Just beside that snowman. Kay? Kay? It looks like we're too late. Hmm. If only the snowman could talk. I bet he'd know where Kay went. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. What's that, Mr. Snow? Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Suddenly, I had an idea. Ah, <sighs> finally, something other than that carrot nose. You know, I can't even smell out of that thing. Wow, this is so fun. Okay, okay, now please, Mr. Snow, can you tell me if you've seen a dude, yay hi, leave from this spot? Why, yes, yes I did. What a brave young man, headed right down to the River of Doom. River of Doom? Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Did I say doom? I mean flume. Like where kids go on log flume rides in the summer. It's right over there. Phew. <laughs> so there was still hope I could catch up with Kay at the river. If only I could get through all this snow. Don't move, Kay. On my way. Oh, this must be it. Kay? Okay. Are you there? Can you hear me? I sure can. Would you keep it down? Sorry. Um, did you happen to see a guy, yay hi, come through here? Sure, I saw him. You did? Oh, great. Do you know where he went? He was standing right by the frozen ice water. Could have left, could have fallen in. Fallen in? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I hope he'll be okay. Relax, girl. I need a quick rinse anyway. Nope, all clear. Guess he left. Oh. Thank goodness. Do you have any idea where he may have gone? There's a rose garden not too far off. Kinda nice if you like roses. That's it! Kay loves roses. I was positive I'd find him there and we could finally leave this cold, scary place. Kay? Kay, where are you? Kay! Suddenly, I heard a voice. Who goes there? Uh, Kay? Is that you? No, it's me! But I still didn't see anyone. Me? Me who? Me, the tree! Hello! Ah! You can talk! I can even bark! <laughs> Get it? A little tree humor. I was just looking for my friend Kay. Yay, hi. Pretty cute if you ask me. Have you seen him? I have not, but... But? The scarecrow would know. Hey, Scary, did you see any guys come through here? Totally. He was heading towards the evil Snow Queen's palace. Shame. Seemed like a nice dude. The evil Snow Queen? Yeah, coldest lady in all of Alaska. <laughs> Feel that chill? That's her, all right. Uh-oh, she better watch out. Well, she is not gonna lay one icy finger on my friend. Sorry to interrupt. We were just looking for a young girl wearing a blue dress. Usually travels with a small pup named Toto. Hey, you look awfully familiar. Have we met? Uh, I don't believe so. I've got one of those faces, I guess. <laughs> Now, if you don't mind, we were just finishing up a conversation- How about a yellow brick road? Have you seen one of those? I'm gonna let you guys hash this out. Scary, if you could just tell me which way to the palace, I'll be on my way. Straight ahead, lady. But be careful. Real dark and scary in those parts. Well, nothing's gonna stop me. I'm coming for you, Kay. Oh, and bye, guys. Good luck finding that blue dress girl and brick road. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Gerda marched through the icy forest on her search for Kay. Then she remembered a safety rule her scout leader had taught her. When in doubt, shout. <laughs> Kay? Kay, where are you? Kay? Who are you? Who are you? I was taking a nap and you woke me up. So I'll ask the questions. Who are you? I'm Gerda P. Hobsworth, Girl Scout Ambassador and President of my school's Botany Club. Very impressive. I'm Lady Shannon Von Sol, Sorceress of Eternal Summer. It doesn't look or feel like Eternal Summer around here. Oh, well, not here, obviously. Come see. Sorry about all that shouting. I'm looking for my friend Kay. Word on the street is he went towards the Snow Queen's palace. Oh, she's a brat. Maybe even evil. Oh no, I hope he'll be okay. Here we are. Still not getting any summer vibes. Oh wow! Awesome.
Welcome, it's like paradise in here. It looks just like Florida, that's where I'm from. <laughs> it's always like summer there. Wonderful, then you'll feel right at home here. Well, I can't stay, I have to go find Kay, but maybe we'll stop by on our way home? Oh, just stay for a bit, I have popsicles. Hmm, I love popsicles, but no thank you. I really have to go. Suit yourself. Oh, okay, so how do I get out? Gerda looked around but couldn't see the door anywhere. She hadn't been there long. How could she have already gotten lost? Everywhere I look, there's just more palm trees. They're everywhere. Oh, and where did that sorceress lady go? <laughs> Owie! Oh, that's gotta hurt. Darn coconut. Oh. oh, actually, now that I'm sitting, I realize I'm pretty tired. Ooh. You know, I think I'll just take sleep a little and just, uh, then I'll go find Kay. Gerda drifted off to sleep and found herself in a crazy dream. She had found Kay, except he was different. He was a prince. Wow, hey Kay. But Kay ignored her. Kay? I came to rescue you. Suddenly, a beautiful woman appeared. She was dressed head to toe in white silk and sparkly crystals. Wow, you're really shiny. <laughs> she bent to give Gerda a kiss on the top of her head. Wow, just like my grandma does. But when the woman in white kissed her, Gerda's hair turned to ice. Okay, not like my grandma. Then Gerda realized she was becoming completely frozen. A curse? Oh no, okay. Help! But Kay looked on as if he didn't even hear her. Kay! <gasps> Scary, I hope Kay hasn't become frozen. Okay, I had my nap, now I gotta go. But Gerda realized she still didn't know the way out of eternal summer. Where is Lady Shannon Von Soul? Hello, hello lady. It's like she tried to trap me in here. Wait a second, doesn't sorceress really just mean witch? Oh no, she's a witch! Not necessarily. Oh? Sorcery is just magic, so technically there could be a nice sorceress. Oh, okay. But she isn't. Lady Shannon Von Sol isn't nice? She won't let me leave. I'm a prisoner. At night, I sleep in a cage. Well, it's really cold outside. I don't think a toucan can survive out there. I bet a toucan can too survive out there. Just wait till she puts you in a cage. Why would she want to put me in a cage? She's obsessed with summer and sunshine. You're from Florida, so you're like the most summery, sunshiny creature she's ever seen. Trust me, you gotta get out of here. Okay, well, how about this? You show me the door, and I'll smuggle you out with me. Deal! So Gerda followed the toucan through the eternal summer paradise, past all the palm trees and coconuts. Here it is! Let's bust out! Do you have a coat? Do I have a coat? I'm a bird! What do you think? So sassy. I have an idea. Fly in here. And where do you think you're going? What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. I said, where do you think you're going? I'm just gonna find my friend Kay. Kay? <laughs> but it's much too cold out here. Come back inside. Don't listen to her. Excuse me? I didn't say anything. Psst, let me out. Okay, I definitely heard something that time. Now! Run! Heard a ran and ran and ran and ran and ran, but the thing about Alaska is... Ice! she's okay. You're pretty clumsy, huh? <sighs> well, I'm not used to all this ice and snow. Brr, neither am I. It's freezing out here. Oh, I know, but I have to save my friend Kay. He was taken by the Snow Queen. Oof, she's the evilest queen ever. Yeah, I heard she's mega scary. Oh, poor Kay. See, doesn't he look nice? He's probably so cold and afraid. Hey, what's the big idea? Stop it! Are you trying to tell me something? Can you speak? Un poquito. Hmm, is that Spanish? Took a little bit of Spanish in school. Hola, mi nombre es Gerda. 
Hola, Erda. Mi nombre es Pete. Nice to meet you, Pete. Unfortunately, I don't know more Spanish than that. Do you two can? No, but I speak fluent bird. Oh, <laughs> duh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, this place is crazy. Pete here tells me there's a princess who lives nearby who just married a prince. Sounds nice, but I'm not really in the mood for a love story right now. He says the prince looks just like your friend Kay. Really? Married? Kay? Kay? And he's a prince? Whoa, just like my dream. We have to go to that palace right now. He says it's one mile as the raven flies, but on foot, it'll take about 24 hours. A whole day? Well, we better get going then. Pete has an interesting idea. Huh? Ready for liftoff? Oh, um, is this safe? We're birds. We do this all the time. Relax. Gerda tried to relax, which was hard because, you know, she was being carried over a snowy mountain by a bunch of birds. <laughs> but once she was brave enough to open her eyes, she saw that it was really quite beautiful. Wow. <laughs> right? We birds got a pretty decent view. Wow, this is so fun. There it is. I see the palace. Oh, I really hope Kay's in there. <sighs> Oh, gracias, Pete. Other birds, thank you all. I'm forever indebted to you. Well, here goes nothing. Much better in here. Nice and toasty. Hello. Kay, princess, hello. I'm the princess. Who are you? I'm Gerda P. Hopsworth. <laughs> I'm looking for my friend. I think you may have married him. <laughs> oh, how wonderful. He'll be so happy to see you. Come, sit by the fire and warm up. W where is he? Darling, come down. There are some friends here to see you. Kay, is that you? What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 5. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Kay, is that you? My name is Kevin, but I suppose you could call me Kay. Oh, he's not Kay. I'm sorry, dear. Not as sorry as I am. Are you all right? Gerda was not all right, and she told the prince and princess all about it. I lost my friend. Kay? Yes, Kay, and I think the Snow Queen has him. Oh, she's bad news. I know, that's what everyone says. And then I heard that someone who looked just like my Kay had come here and married the beautiful princess. But you're not Kay at all. Oh, I should have never come to Alaska. <laughs> Alaska? You're not in Alaska. I'm not? No, Alaska is far, far away from here. This village is called Schnee. Schnee? Great, so now I'm lost too. Just add that to the list. I'm cold, I'm hungry, I'm sad, I'm scared, and I'm lost. <laughs> That's so sad. Maybe we can help. The prince and princess invited Gerda to spend the night. And I don't know if you've ever spent a night in a palace, but it was pretty nice. There was delicious food. <laughs> Big warm beds near cozy warm fireplaces. And in the morning, the prince and princess gave Gerda her very own golden carriage and a beautiful white horse. They gave the toucan a warm vest and a tiny fur cap. And for their journey, plenty of food, lanterns, and a compass. The Snow Queen's palace is in a place called Glacier in the north. Do you know how to use a compass? Allow me. I'm a bird with excellent navigational skills. North is that way. That's south. Wishful thinking, I guess. Good luck. Thanks for everything, your highnesses. Goodbye. Goodbye. Gerda and the toucan set off for the north, feeling quite luxurious in their golden carriage. Wow, that is so cool. The only bad thing about a golden carriage is it's a little flashy and has the potential to attract robbers. What a nice carriage you have. Um, thank you. We'll just be taking it and everything else you've got, princess. Oh, I'm not a princess. Hush up and hop out. Leave her alone. I want to keep the girl. Say what now? Absolutely not. 
Don't mind her. I'm the real boss around here. You can be my new best friend. It gets lonely out here living a life of crime. Gerda didn't see how she had much of a choice. These people had swords after all. And the little one was a biter. Aw, cute bird. I'll keep him too. Great. Giddy up, horsey. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? So now Gerda and the Toucan were off on a new and totally unexpected leg of their journey. This time to live with the band of robbers deep in the snowy woods of Schnee, wherever that was. This is it. Home sweet home. It's nice. <laughs> Thanks. We have quite the collection. Check it out. I even have a pet reindeer. You should let him out so he can get some fresh air and exercise. Are you nuts? He'll run away. You look naughty, too. I'll go find a cage for you. We gotta get out of here! Maybe it's not so bad. Easy for you to say. It's like the sorceress's place all over again. What are you two whispering about? Nothing. Nothing. Good. In your cage. Okay, new best friend, let's play a game. What game? Sword fight. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The little robber girl had just challenged Gerda to a sword fight. Sword fight? A play sword fight. But you actually have a sword. That makes it pretty real in my book. Fine, we won't play. It's time for dinner anyway. Come and get it, everybody. Come and get your slop. Mmm, looks delicious. You must give me the recipe. Oh, it's not for you. There are pellets in your cage. Pellets, yum. Probably better than slop. Eat up, girl. You know, I'm really not hungry. Maybe I should get going. We, we should get going. Oh, no, you don't. You're my new best friend. You stay here with me. But I have to rescue my friend, Kay. It's very important. Kay will be fine. Forget Kay. Sit. Eat. Oh, no. I hope they'll be okay. Later, after their dinner of slop, the robber girl showed Gerda her room. Wow, you have a lot of birds. I love birds. That's why I was so excited to find you and your parrot. Toucan! Whatever. I don't want to. Fine. Why do they all have little strings tied to their legs? Because I don't want them to fly away, obviously. But why do you trap your creatures and make them stay? I told you, I get very lonely out here. These are the only friends I ever had until you came along. Now, let's go to sleep. You sleep with your sword? Always. Gerda lay down near the robber girl, making sure that she was far enough away from her sharp sword, of course. The girl went to sleep immediately, but Gerda couldn't sleep. She was too worried about Kay. How would she ever rescue him if she was also trapped? Hey, girl. Me? Yeah, you. I saw your body, Kay. You did? When? Shh. A few days ago. I just got tied up here yesterday. Where is he? He was with the Snow Queen at her palace. How do you know it was him? I heard the Snow Queen call him by name. Did she seem very mean? Oh, yes. She's very wicked. Poor Kay. Oh, I miss him so much. How are they ever going to get out of this one? I just want to find him and save him. He was my best friend in the whole world. Be quiet. You wake the girl. But the robber girl was not sleeping at all. She had heard everything. She wanted a friend more than anything in the world, but she knew she couldn't keep Gerda from Kay. She had to help. The next morning, very early, so early the sun wasn't even awake, the robber girl woke Gerda. Hey. What time is it? Time to get you to your friends, Kay. Huh? Come on. You're letting us go? I want to be your friend, and I want you to stay here forever. But for some reason, I want to help you. Weird, right? Not weird at all. That's what a real friend would do. Really? Yes. Thank you, friend. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Now you be careful. 
Don't run too fast and drop my friend. Giddy up! The reindeer didn't have to be told twice. He took off for Glacier, prancing and leaping with joy. Woohoo! Let's go get Kay! Wait for me! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure! Come on! Chapter 7, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time! Gerda, Toucan, and the reindeer had traveled all day through snow and ice and still no sign of Glacier. We've been walking forever. Doesn't this thing go any faster? Why don't you fly? <laughs> My wings got tired. Hey, reindeer, can you talk? Hello? Hmm? Oh, yes, but my name isn't Reindeer, it's Clyde. Oh, hi Clyde. Pleased to be officially introduced. <laughs> Clyde, are you sure we're going the right way? Yes, I'm sure. Uh, at least I think I'm sure. You think you're sure? He spent the last couple years in captivity. Give him a break, Toucan. Why don't you fly up and check out the bird's eye view? Great idea, Clyde. Toucan, can you do that? I liked it better when you didn't talk. So, Clyde, tell me about Glacier. Oh, it's the most beautiful place in the world. Wow, that is so cool. Have you been to Florida, though? I think that's the most beautiful place. Not really my scene, but I have some cousins who go there every year for Christmas. Christmas. Wait a second. Do you know Santa's reindeer? Yeah, Donner and Blitzen and I go way back. Oh, <laughs> so can you fly or what? Good question. I never tried. What? I know for a fact that humans can't fly, and that didn't stop me from trying. I'm fly! Ow. That's how I broke my arm. See? You can still see the scar. <laughs> wow. I know. So anyways, you should totally try to fly. Okay, maybe you should hop off first. Good thinking. Okay, just run really fast and then leap. Whoa! Ow! Sorry, totally my bad on that one. What happened here? I tried to fly. Oh boy, stick to what you know, Clyde. I think maybe Santa's reindeer eats some magic oats or something like that. <laughs> or maybe it's like Peter Pan and you gotta think happy thoughts. <gasps> or maybe you just gotta believe in yourself. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, you see anything up there, Toucan? Yeah, I saw a palace just outside the forest. That way! Great! Let's go, gang! Wow, this is so fun! When Gerda and her friends stepped out of the woods, they stopped, stunned. The palace was huge and sparkly, as if it were covered in a million diamonds. Trees were covered in shimmering icicles, and ice sculptures of animals dotted the land for as far as the eye could see. These are amazing! They look so real! Told you this place was pretty. It is, but we have work to do, people. Or, uh, animals. <laughs> Let's go find Kay. Kay? Hello? Are you there? Kay? Kay? And suddenly, there he was in the distance. Kay in the flesh. Kay, it's really you. Wait, what is he doing? Kay, it's me, Gerda, your best friend. Stop it! Why is your friend trying to shoot us with frozen arrows? Yeah, that's not very friendly. Guys, that's not Kay. I mean, it is, but he's not himself. He must be under the Snow Queen's spell or something. We have to save him. Uh-oh, she better watch out. Wait, I think I might know how to break the spell. You do? There's an old story about the Snow Queen that I heard as a youngster. Yeah? And I don't know if it's true or just one of those myths. Yeah? But legend has it that to break the Snow Queen's spell over someone... Spit it out, Clyde! You have to give them a kiss. A kiss? No way! Not you, Toucan. Gerda. Oh, right. Okay, problem. Kay is um trying to shoot me with arrows, so how would I get close enough to even give him a kiss? I think we'll just have to run as fast as we can and dodge the arrows. We... Gerda helped both of us to freedom. We owe her. Yeah, you're right. We got you, Gerda. Thanks. You guys ready? Yeah. Let's go. Hello. Snow Queen. That's right, kids. The Snow Queen. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. 
Chapter eight, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Snow Queen was beautiful. In fact, she looked just like Gerda had dreamed, shimmering from head to toe. She certainly didn't look evil. You're the most sparkly lady I ever saw. Thank you. May I give you a little kiss? The Snow Queen leaned in and was just about to give Toucan a little peck on the head when Gerda remembered her dream. No, Toucan, that's how she freezes you. That's so not cool. Oh, did I do that? Silly me. <gasps> Wait, are all these ice sculptures real animals? Of course. Aren't they lovely? You are evil, and I know you took my friend Kay, but we're here to save him. Save him? But Kay loves it here. Impossible. You're an evil queen, and you brainwashed him. I'll show you. Kay, come here. Yes, my queen. Kay, would you tell this girl that you're happy here? Kay, no! You like the beach and the sun and hanging out with me, don't you remember? I'm very happy here. See, he's the snow prince. And you can be the snow princess if you like. No way! Then you can be my prisoner. Hey! Gerda! You want some too, reindeer? It's Clyde. Come on, Snow Prince, let's go. Well, I guess being free for a day was pretty cool. Don't talk like that, Clyde. We're gonna bust out. You'll be free again, we'll save the toucan, and I'll rescue Kay, you'll see. But how, Gerda? Did I mention I was a Girl Scout? I don't even know what that means. It means that I can save us. OMG, I love it. Oh, cool. Wait, I don't get it. What does that do? Conjure up some kind of magic? Pretty much. Fire melts ice. It's kind of like magic. Let's go. Safety first. Gerda and Clyde found Kay alone, shivering and looking miserable. He was almost blue from the cold. Kay? Do the kiss thing. Don't rush me. This is a big step in our relationship. How's my breath? <gasps> You're just saving his life, remember? Not getting married. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Gerda? Kay! Oh, you're back! What happened? You were captured by the evil Snow Queen. She froze your heart, but I saved you. Really? How? Ah, uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> You got a little something on your face there. Yoo-hoo, Snow Prince. Where are you? Ah, Snow Queen, let's go. Wait, we gotta get Toucan. What happened? You got frozen, but don't worry, we're going home. Florida, baby. Woohoo! Yay, I'm so happy. Wait, did you save me with a kiss too? Don't worry about it. Ooh! K and Gerda sitting in a tree. K I S S I N G. Hush up, Toucan. We gotta go save the rest of these animals. Thank you. Thank you. Now we can go. Guys, hop on. One, two, three, blast off. Whoa! You're doing it, Clyde! You're flying! How about that? I am. I knew you could. Good timing, by the way. Snow Prince, where are you going? Get back here. No way. Yeah, see you never. Hooray, they beat the bad guy. Kay and Gerda were so happy to be home again, back in warm, sunny Florida, far, far away from the frozen land of the evil Snow Queen. Clyde stayed for a quick visit, swam in the ocean, had some ice cream, but he got homesick and returned to the north. Toucan, on the other hand, was right at home. So, what do you guys want to do next? Build a sand castle? Go to Disney World? Go windsurfing? Maybe some alligator wrestling? What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Hey, guys. Hey, 
Hey Crafty Carol! Oh hey Miss Bootsy! I was just catching up on some reading. I was reading Alice in Wonderland. Oh my gosh, I love the Alice in Wonderland you've been doing here at Cool School. It we just happened to be making an Alice in Wonderland craft today. An Alice in Wonderland craft? We are making Alice in Wonderland snow globes! <gasps> Yay! That's right, get excited. Let's sit down. Wow. Here you go, Miss Booksy. You get started with yours. Two, three. Watch out. Oh, it's so cold. Oh, it's so cold out. Oh. This is, though. Shaking it? Yeah. And voila. Hi, boys and girls. It's me, Miss Booksy. You guys remember Alice in Wonderland, right? One of our most fun stories here at Cool School. Let's read it again, but this time, tell me who Alice meets in Wonderland. Oh, I'm Alice. Hi. So I was here trying my best not to be so bored, even though there was nothing to do but stare into space like this. When I noticed a little white rabbit this was no ordinary rabbit. He was wearing a suit and glasses and he was talking to himself. It seems like he was late. A talking rabbit who could tell time? This wasn't boring at all. He rushed right past me saying, Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be late, oh dear. Well, this was just too curious. I must follow the white rabbit. He slipped into a rabbit hole. So I did too. Whoa, but this was no ordinary rabbit hole. Ah, wait, I'm not really falling. I'm more like floating, like a feather. Cool. <laughs> wait, where am I? Whoa, did I fall all the way through the earth? Maybe I'm in Australia. <laughs> Good thing they speak English there. <laughs> hmm, a small key. But this key is way too small for any of these doors. Well, what do you know? There's a teensy door. Wow, too bad this door's so small. I don't even think I could get my head through. And if I could, what good would my head be without the rest of me? <sighs> hey, that wasn't there before. It says, Drink me. Hmm, I know I'm not supposed to just drink things willy-nilly. What if it's poison? Or what if it's something just weird, like cauliflower juice? <laughs> hmm, it says here, definitely not poison and most certainly not cauliflower juice. Well, that's odd. Okay, I'll try just a sip. <coughs> Mmm, delicious. It tastes like everything I like. Cherry pie, ice cream, pineapples, roast turkey, French toast, mmm, pancakes. Mm. Oh, hey, hey, what's happening? Uh oh, oh, I wonder if I shouldn't have tried that juice. Well, this is totally weird. But hey, now I can go into that garden. Oh no, the key is all the way up there at the table. That's as high as the Empire State Building now. Whoa, oh, oh, there's a giant cookie. Well, if the drink made me smaller, maybe the cookie will make me bigger. Food does make you grow. <laughs> okay, here goes nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Oh, oh, wait, I think, whoa! Well, this is not what I had in mind. Now I'm so big that I'm stuck. But it's good to know, cookies are nutritious. Oh dear, I'm incredibly late. The queen simply will not tolerate this. Oh dear. Please, Mr. Rabbit, I'm stuck. I can't help you now, didn't you hear me? I'm terribly late. But, but what if I'm stuck up here forever? It's really hot in here and I don't like being a giant. <laughs> Stop crying, I'll get all wet and ruin this new suit. I'm sorry, but this is just really uncomfortable. Ah, well, I'm leaving. 
Well, that's better at least. Wait, wait a second. I'm shrinking. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, oh no. Well, this isn't good. Oh, luckily, I'm a very good swimmer. <laughs> I took lessons at camp. <laughs> oh, look. There's a friendly looking mouse. Yoo-hoo! Mousey! <laughs> Mr. Mouse? Do you know how to get to the beautiful garden with the Ferris wheel and the merry-go-round? Come on, follow me. Okay. Soon we were joined by all sorts of small animals. A gang of baby ducks, a salamander, two frogs, and a hamster named Philip. <laughs> we swam and swam and swam, going right under the door and into the garden and downstream past flowers and crickets, caterpillars, and garden gnomes. When we finally got to dry land, I thought we would go play, or at least find a snack. <laughs> but the animals said they had to have an election, but they couldn't decide what they were voting on, and it got quite noisy. Oh look, there's the white rabbit. He was the one who led me down the rabbit hole, so he must know the way out. I chased after him, but I was too small for him to notice me. Oh, if only there was some more growing potion. And poof, just like magic, there was a little bottle right in my path, and it had a label on it that said, drink me, Alice. So I took a sip. And I grew. <laughs> what a relief. Oh, I'm me again. Not a great big giant, and not a teeny tiny mouse. Oh, Speaking of a tiny mouse, all of the small animals saw me suddenly grow larger, and boy, did that scare them. They all scattered away, shrieking. Girlzilla! She's a giant! Sorry. Where's that darn rabbit this time? I'm looking for a rabbit. Are you looking for something? I found myself face to face with a giant caterpillar. Wait, did I shrink again? You don't look shrunken to me. But why are you so large? And how did you learn to talk? That's a silly question. Are you silly? I don't think so. Well then, let's hear a poem. Excuse me? I'd like to hear a poem. One that rhymes, please. Um, okay, well, I never heard of a caterpillar who likes poetry, but here goes. <clears throat> this one is called The Queen of Hearts. The Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts all on a summer's day. The knave of hearts, he stole those tarts and took them clean away. The king of hearts called for the tarts and beat the knave full sore. The knave of hearts brought back the tarts and vowed he'd steal no more. How dare you accuse the knave of stealing the queen's tart? Don't you know the queen will stay off with his head? It's only a made up poem. The queen of hearts isn't real. Shh! Of course the queen is real. And if she hears you say she isn't, she'll say off with your head. Oh no, but I like my head. It helps me think things and see things and smell things. And it has my hair on it. I really like my hair. <laughs> You're a traitor to the queen. Oh, this is a terrible misunderstanding. I, I, I wish I could shrink down so super tiny that I could just escape. Here, eat this. I gobbled up the cookie that he gave me and Oh no, I grew taller and taller and taller and I was very gigantic. Hey, I wanna be small so I could just hide from the queen. You made me even bigger. And you've turned rainbow colored. So you're very easy to spot. Oh, you caterpillar, I ought to step on you. That would be a crime and the queen would say. Off with her head, yeah, yeah, I heard you the first time. Oh, how puzzling all these changes are. I'm never sure what I'm going to be from one minute to another. I've got to get back to looking like myself again, and I must get to that garden and ride the Ferris wheel at least once, and then I definitely, absolutely, must get home in time for dinner. Oh, where's that rabbit? Oh. I'm still all funny. Let's see, how do I get back to myself? Just good old Alice. Hey, there's that rabbit. Hey, rabbit. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, I'm talking here. Oh, there you are. There I am, but I've been looking for you. Marianne, you dreadful girl. Get back to work at once. Huh? Oh boy, worst assistant I've ever had. I think you have me confused with someone else. <laughs> Perhaps someone who's rather tall and multicolored. That's enough jibber jabber nonsense. Now will you please go fetch my fan? I've lost my other one. Fine, but after I do, you're telling me the way out of this crazy rabbit hole. Why is his house big enough to fit a giant? Oh, maybe it's so when he hops, he doesn't hit the ceiling. <laughs> I bet that's it. Pretty smart. Now, where's that fan? Oh, I think I deserve a cookie for this. There's that fan. Wait a second. Last time I picked up the rabbit's fan, I changed size. But did I grow to be a gigantic giant? Or did I shrink down teensy weensy? I can't remember. Well, let's just take a chance. Here goes nothing. Hey, I'm not all rainbow colored now. <laughs> Score! But, well, wait, uh-oh, I, I think I'm growing. Oh, I better crouch down so that I don't hit the ceiling. Oh no! You're wearing my house! What, this old thing? I'm calling the police! The police? But I'm already locked up! Well kids, this takes the cake. If I told my friends back home about this, they'd never believe me. <laughs> this is just like a fairy tale. Someone should write a story about me. We could call it Alice in the Rabbit Hole. Nah, that doesn't sound right. Hmm. It's the fuzz! All right, come out with your hands up. I can't come out, but I can put my hands up. See? <gasps> and she stole my cookie. Dreadful girl. But I'm going to need a backup here. We got a situation. I want to come out. I promise. I just can't. I didn't mean to do anything wrong. Look, I'm only a kid. Biggest kid I ever saw. Maybe it's from stealing so many cookies. Hey, I had permission to eat those other cookies. And this one, well, I'm gonna eat it now just because you're being so mean. So, to you, rabbit. But we're gonna need to file a missing persons report. She disappeared. Well, there's the house and there's the rabbit and the policeman. But where's Alice? Over here. The cookie made me shrink and I escaped. Let's go. <sighs> okay, this looks like a great place to rest. <gasps> what are you guys supposed to be? We are footmen. Footmen? <laughs> but you have fins. Shouldn't I call you fin men? <laughs> Footman is a fancy word for a servant. I work for the Duchess. And I work for the Queen. Well, I am very impressed. Nice to meet you both. I think I'd like to ask the Duchess if she can help me find my way home. Wait, you need me to open the door. I'm the footman. I can do it. Bless you. Bless you. Gesundheit. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Who let you in? My footman? More like the fin man. <laughs> Am I right? Need a tissue? Here. Watch the baby. Wait a second. I'm bigger than that baby. Of course you are. Why wouldn't you be? But out there, I was tiny. Look, I'm tiny. I'm big. Tiny. Big. Tiny. I'm big. <laughs> That's enough. I'm going to play croquet. Take good care of the baby. Why is everyone giving me jobs to do? Good thing I like babies. Okay, baby, it's just you and me. And me. Ah! A giant cat! Maybe you're just small. I think I'm my usual size now, actually. It's hard to tell sometimes. Say, do you know how to babysit? There's a baby here? I only see you, me, and a pig wearing a diaper. Ah! Ah! The baby! 
baby turned into a pig! Oh no, I'm the worst babysitter ever! And why are you grinning? This isn't funny. I'm a Cheshire cat, it's what I do. Well stop it, it's not funny and I don't know how to take care of a pig slash baby. Don't worry about it, Porky knows how to take care of himself. Let's watch TV and order a pizza. Usually I'd say yes to pizza, but you guys are making me a little nervous. I'm out of here. Hey, the, the, the room turned all topsy-turvy. Do you know the way out of here? Why don't you use the door, you batchy galoob? my way home, or at least this really awesome garden with a ferris wheel and a merry-go-round. <laughs> I heard there might even be a roller coaster. Sounds cool. If I was an actual superhero with superpowers, I would fly you there. Thanks. Unfortunately, you seem like the most regular person I've met in this rabbit hole. Is that what this is? One minute I was at school looking for ink in my locker. Next thing I know, I'm down here and you come falling through the ceiling. <sighs> Let me guess. No way out. No, I think we're trapped. Oh, story of my life. Hey, that looks like ink. Toss it here. Ah! My bad. Whoa, I turned into a cartoon. Hey, look, all I have to do is draw something and then it's real. Awesome. Wow. All I've been able to do is shrink and grow and shrink and grow and shrink and grow and shrink and grow. Wow, <laughs> cool jetpack. I've always wanted to do that. Can I have a jetpack too? Come on. Hey guys, it's me, Alice. After Drew and I got out of the secret lair, Drew disappeared. Like he went on to another dimension or something, probably to do some superhero stuff. Anyway, I'm still trying to find my way out of this rabbit hole. <gasps> oh look, there's some nice looking fellows that should be able to help me. <laughs> They're sleeping. Shh. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, wait a second, you're just pretending. We were hoping you would leave us alone. Well, that's rude. Says the girl who interrupted our tea party. Your hair is too long. You should get a haircut. Why, you're rude too. Besides, I like my hair. And that rude little mouse is still pretending to be asleep, even though we've met before. I thought we were friends. Oh no, he really is asleep. Poor little guy's exhausted. Oh dear, now I am the rude one. No worries, have some tea. I guess he's a sleep talker. <laughs> the other two introduced themselves as the March Hare and the Mad Hatter. The March Hare was an odd creature indeed. He would butter a piece of toast and take one bite and say, yuck, too much butter, and then on to the next piece of toast. Same thing, over and over again. And the Mad Hatter, he was even odder. No, that's an udder, I said otter. Sorry. An otter? Where? Not that kind of otter. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Good. Otters are utterly annoying. Why do you keep dipping your watch into your tea? Well, it all goes back to the time I killed time. And then the Mad Hatter told me the most ridiculous story. He had to sing for the queen. He says he sang an old classic, Twinkle Twinkle. Twinkle Twinkle Little Bat, how I wonder where you're at. I told him he had the words all wrong, but he insisted he was right, and I was ruining his story. On he went. Up above the world you fly, like a tea tray in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle. Anyway, you'll get the idea. While well, the queen jumped up and said he was killing the time, and then she yelled, Off with his head! The Mad Hatter managed to escape, head and all. But ever since, time has been paused, stopped, finished, el finito. Yes, my watch stopped at four o'clock, and we've just been here ever since. It's always tea time. I love tea time, but I do wish dinner time would come. 
At least you don't ever have bedtime. Bedtime is the worst. <laughs> oh, but I do love bedtime stories. <laughs> Those are so cool. I like stories about princesses and dragons and pirates. Oh, and stories about tigers and, and robots and, and romance. Oh, I love a romance. <laughs> and adventure and ninjas and oh, fairies and, and pixies. And oh, of course, the story about a handsome prince. Enough. We don't have time for you to list every kind of story ever told. Rude. Besides, I thought you had a lot of time. Weren't you listening? We have no time. That's very confusing. All I know is that you are a very rude bunny. And you are a very rude hatter, whatever that is. And you, Mr. Mouse, I thought you were supposed to be nice. I am, dear. Quite nice. Lovely to see you. Well, lovely to see you too. As for the rest of you, I'm going. Perfect. Goodbye. No, bad bye. It's the garden I've been looking for. Woohoo! Hi again. I'm finally in the garden that I've been looking for. Awesome sauce. I should go to the Ferris wheel and get cotton candy. What's that noise? I better hide. Wow, the queen is actually a queen of hearts from a deck of playing cards. I wonder if she likes to play Go Fish. What's that? It smells like a rotten child. Hey, I'm not rotten. I'm really nice. Ask anybody, except the Mad Hatter <laughs> or the March Hare. They don't think I'm really nice. Or the White Rabbit. Don't ask him. He thinks I stole his cookie and ruined his house. <laughs> you did ruin my house. Off with her head. No way. No, you're not offing with my head. I came here to do two things. Ride the Ferris wheel and eat cotton candy. So kindly, your highness, tell me where the Ferris wheel is. She is just a child, dear. Maybe you shouldn't off with her head. Oh, well, can you at least play croquet? I sure can. Oh boy, do I wish I hadn't said that. The queen's croquet game was totally bananas. The card soldiers had to bend over backwards and frontwards to make the arches hit the ball through. Except the croquet balls were live hedgehogs and no one had any regular mallets. Instead, they used real live pink flamingos. It was the weirdest game ever. But I was too scared not to play or else she might say, off with Alice's head. Hmm. I'm really sorry, you guys. I promise to be very gentle. Thank you. No problem, Alice. Anyway, so I'm just standing over here waiting for my turn, and guess who I see? Drew Pandas? No. Rapunzel? Nuh -uh. Crafty Carol? No. Octavia? Keep guessing. Snow White? No. Cheshire Cat? That's right, the Cheshire Cat. Well, sort of, anyway. All I could see was his Cheshire Cat grin. Look, right over there. Hey, Cheshire Cat, is that really you? Yeah, how you doing? Not so great. I thought this garden was gonna be the best place ever, and it's not at all. The queen keeps yelling about offing people's heads, which personally, I don't find very gracious, and I don't like this mean old game of croquet. I don't think it's nice at all to the flamingos, or the hedgehogs, or even the card soldiers. By the way, why are you just a mouth right now? What happened to the rest of you? It's simple. The queen can't say off with my head if I don't have a head. How about that? That better? Much better. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Any idea how we can escape? What is that? Off with us! Off with us! Uh -uh! She couldn't figure out what to say, and she was getting pretty, 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 pretty angry. Quick! Cheshire Cat, how do we get out of here? Yo, Alice, eat this apple. Hey, watch it. Cool. Hey, Queen. Mm. What now? Now we're light enough to just float away. Huh? Whoa! away from that mean old queen just in the nick of time. And hey, there's the Ferris wheel. <laughs> awesome. Now I just need to get the rest of me back so I can ride it. 
At least I have a mouth left to eat my cotton candy with. I'm glad we got away from the queen, but what now? I'm just eyes and a mouth. Don't worry about it. All we gotta do is drink this potion. Wait a minute. Ah, oh, no, I left the potion in my pocket, which was on my pants, which have disappeared. Oh no, what if I'm only a mouth and eyes forever? I'll never get to learn ballet, or run a marathon, or swim with the dolphins. What about me over here? Those were my favorite pants. Whoa, Alice, is that you? Yeah, hi, Drew. Wait, Drew, can you draw the rest of us? I think I can. How's that? Awesome, <laughs> thanks. Okay, I don't know what you looked like before. Can you describe yourself? Oh, sure. First, let's see. I was tall, very tall, and strong with big muscles, a very cool mustache, and a suit made of pure gold. Oh, that's perfect. That is not what you looked like. Come on, why you gotta ruin all my fun? He's actually a purple stripy cat, super furry, with a yellow and orange necktie, <laughs> and a red hat with little flowers sticking out the top. Don't forget my orange cargo pants. Done. There's that potion. Told you I left it in my pocket. Never mind that now. Let's go play. <laughs> Woohoo! Alice, Drew, and the Cheshire Cat went over to the Ferris wheel. They were so excited. Three tickets for the Ferris wheel, please. <laughs> Sorry, kiddo. You must be this tall to ride. I'm sure I was taller before. Or maybe the Ferris wheel was smaller. See, I keep eating these cookies and drinking these potions that make me grow and shrink, and I'm pretty sure the real me is tall enough to ride this ride. Sorry, kid. Move along. Ugh! Oh well, there were more rides, so the three went over to the merry-go-round. Three tickets for the merry-go-round, please. This is a kid's ride. You're way too tall. What? Now I'm too tall? Too tall. Hey, there's a roller coaster over there. Maybe you'll be just the right amount of tall for that one. Let's try it. It totally looked like a regular roller coaster, but when they got there, they saw that it was ginormous and that the you must be this tall to ride sign was towering over their heads. I thought this garden was going to be amazing and so much fun, but it's not. First, there was that awful game of flamingo hedgehog croquet. Then the queen wanted to off with my head. And now, all these rides keep changing size. Or am I? I don't even know. And, and I haven't even had one single bite of cotton candy! Aw, cheer up, Alice. Yeah, I don't like it when you're sad. Hey, I have an idea. Here! Yes! My own jetpack! Aw, oh, I always wanted one of these. Now we can fly up to the top of the Ferris wheel. You can see all the sights. Awesome! And we can go around and around in circles just like a merry-go-round. Oh, okay, I'm getting dizzy. And we can go up and down and all around just like a roller coaster. Ah, too fast. That was fun, Drew. Thanks. Yeah, tons of fun. Oh, I'm just glad it's over. No problem, guys. Suddenly, the gang heard a familiar voice. There they are! with their heads. Oh no, it's the Queen of Hearts. Run! Better yet, let's jet. Alice Drew and the Cheshire Cat flew right over the Queen and her army. She did not like that at all. She would have totally offed their heads if she could have reached them. Alice Drew and the Cheshire Cat zipped over the Queen's head and into safer territory. Drew quickly sketched a door leading to another garden. He flew through, followed by the Cheshire Cat. But when Alice got to the door, she realized it was too tiny for her. Oh no, I've grown giant again. What's going on? You guys go on ahead. I must find out the cure to all this growing and shrinking. Alice began to walk through the garden looking for an apple or a cookie like the ones she'd eaten before. Oh, there's a plate of tarts. Perfect. These are the queen's tarts. Hands off, you dessert thief. Sorry, I didn't know. All rise. Today the honorable judge, the king of hearts, will hear the case of the missing tarts. But the tarts are right there. So who stole the tarts? No one. They're right there. It was the knave. The knave of hearts stole the tarts. No, he didn't. Then why did you say he did? I didn't. Don't you remember your poem, Your Honor? <laughs> the evidence.
The queen of hearts, she made some tarts all in a summer's day. The knave of hearts, he stole those tarts and took them clean away. The king of hearts called for the tarts and beat the knave full sore. The knave of hearts brought back the tarts and vowed he'd steal no more. And so you see, this giant lady, says the knave of hearts, stole the tarts. Off with his head! No! Please don't off with his head! It was just a made-up poem! Silence in the court! That means you, Alice! But quiet! Or it's off with your head! Hmm, her head is much too large to off. Hey, that's not my fault! Maybe she stole the tarts! What? Me? I'm trying to defend you! She did steal my cookie! Oh dear, this was getting way out of control. Alice didn't steal any tarts. Well, she was going to, but she didn't actually do it. And she never met a knave of hearts before, but she was pretty sure he didn't steal any either. Besides, weren't the tarts right there and not missing at all? Your Honor, we can all see that the tarts are right here, as in not stolen. So why don't we all just forget about this whole thing and move on? <laughs> Who wants to play croquet? It's you! You're the girl from before! You were much smaller then. Exactly! It was she who stole the tarts. Your Honor, White Rabbit, Caterpillar, animals of the jury. You all have seen me before. You know that, for whatever reason, I keep changing size. It's not from eating. Well, I did eat that one cookie, and then that other one. But those cookies were magical! Or something. I don't know. Will the Mad Hatter please take the stand? Oh, great. This guy again. Kids, as you know, the Mad Hatter and Alice did not exactly get along. The Hatter bowed before the Queen and then began the silliest nonsense Alice had ever seen or heard. There was a girl who stole some tarts, and Alice was her name-o. A-L-I-C-E, 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 and Alice was her name-o. He's just making up this song. No fair! The real song is B-I-N-G-O, and then she tried to blame the name-o. Alice was her name-o. A-L-I-C-E. Enough! I don't like this song. Off with his head! <laughs> Order! Order in the court! The animal jury will decide who is guilty, Alice or the knave. The animals of the jury whispered, barked, meowed, squeaked, and riveted among themselves. Finally, they had their decision. We, the animals of the jury, think it was Alice who ate the tarts. The knave of hearts is as skinny as a card. Nobody ate the tarts. They're right there. Wait, I'm confused. I thought they were stolen. They were stolen, but now they're here. And none are missing? Nope. Well, why are we arguing about this? I wonder why anyone does anything here in Wonderland. It's all so silly. Oh, what did she say about Wonderland? Oh, poo to you. You're nothing but a card. Why don't you go fish? Off with her head! The queen sent her entire pack of cards on the attack. They all came flying at Alice as if someone had shuffled them and thrown them in the air, ninja style. What? Oh, I think I'm back at home. Is this real? Ouch! And I think I'm my right size. Oh, this is wonderful. But how did I get back? Was it a dream? No, it couldn't be. But what if I want to go back to Wonderland sometime? It was scary and confusing sometimes, but also kind of fun. <laughs> oh well, time to eat. I'd love a cookie, or maybe a tart. Shh. That's right, she meets the white rabbit, the cute mouse, the other cute animals, the giant caterpillar, the footman, the grand duchess, the Cheshire cat, the stupendous stupendous, the mad hatter, the march hare, the queen of hearts, and the king of hearts.